Hello all and welcome to the fourth installment of our series of customer webinars this year. Uh, today we are going to share uh, the GuideSpark Communicate Cloud HRS connector with you. We have a couple of experts on the, the GuideSpark side. Um, my name is Michael Romero and I've been with GuideSpark for nearly five years now and am currently in charge of our digital marketing programs. Um, but before passing it over to our expert speakers, Melinda and Steve, I have a few house, housekeeping items to go over. Uh, one, we will be answering questions at the end of the webinar. Please place your questions in the appropriate box and we will address as many as we can. Uh, two, if you use social media, use at GuideSpark or hashtag GSWebinar. Three, at the end of the webinar, we will be asking for your feedback, so we would greatly appreciate that you share uh, that with us so that we can continue to improve and provide you with what you're looking for. Uh, lastly, we will be sending out the recording and slides uh, the day following the webinar, so please keep an eye out for that. And without further ado, I'll pass it over to Melinda to take it over. Great. Thank you so much, Mike. And welcome, everybody. So basically, we're going to spend the next 20 to 30 minutes um, taking a look at um, the GSCC uh, Communicate Cloud product, and we're going to go through and talk about the HRIS connectors. Um, we will spend a little bit of time in the product itself showing you a few things as we talk about how you can configure these connectors. And we will also get into um, kind of a technical overview. We won't get too far into the weeds, but we'll talk to you a little bit about um, next steps and requirements and things that you need to put into place in order to um, connect over to your HRIS system. And then lastly, we'll wrap things up. We will open it up for some question and answer. So let me go ahead and just give you guys a brief overview. I'm sure that most of you that are on the line are already using GuideSpark Communicate Cloud. Um, you know, this is our, our communication platform, right, that we have available. And the whole idea with this platform is it's going to allow you to uh, communicate about changes to your employees, right? And so there are all kinds of initiatives and programs and projects that companies are implementing. And we feel that GuideSpark is going to help you fill any kind of communication gap, shall we say, um, when you're trying to convey information out to the rest of the organization. And the way we do this, um, I'm sure you've heard us talk about this before, is we allow you to build out and maintain what we call communication journeys. And this is all because we, uh, we strongly feel that if you are trying to change employees' perceptions and change their thinking and their behaviors, that it doesn't happen overnight with one message, for instance. You've got to do this over time, and that's why we talk about a journey needing to take place. And these journeys are comprised of, obviously, some kind of timeline where you're going to be delivering messages, you've got a variety of content experiences, and um, all of this information is going to happen across the appropriate channel as well because we want to make sure that you're able to reach your employees where they work and on you know, devices that they prefer. Um, and this can manifest in a lot of different ways. Um, one is maybe text messages to non, um, you know, to deskless workers. The other could be um, as simple as we're going to put a poster on the manufacturing floor so that anybody working there um, can go ahead and, and get data that way. So, as we talk about communication journeys, I also want to point out that we can provide for you sort of these pre-built journeys um, that allow you to really get up and going much more quickly um, than if you are going to be left to your own devices and putting together a lot of content and messaging on your own. And I'm sure, again, that a variety of you are taking advantage of some of these. Um, they are really grouped into different categories, as you see here. Uh, and again, they, they really have a templatized approach. So uh, a sample timeline is included. A lot of content assets are available with these. And then, of course, you get the assistance of our services folks. So for instance, a communication strategist who's going to work with you on configuring these pieces to better support your business and your brand and change text and um, update things accordingly. I do want to point out that besides the GuideSpark Communicate Journeys, which are the pre-built pieces, 
we are actually getting a lot of requests these days to put together an entirely custom journey for a company. Um, and that means we're now outside of sort of the, the guardrails of the communicate journey template. And we're able to really start from scratch and work with your organization and your content and subject matter experts to put together something very specific for whatever your initiative is at the organization. Um, and again, this is a services engagement. Um, so that's something um, you're welcome to contact us and, and talk to us about as well um, if you have that kind of need. All right, so a little bit about Communicate Cloud, a little bit about the Communicate Journeys. And I think next steps for us is to dive in to um, the world of the HRIS connector and kind of explain to you guys what this is all about and why it's going to matter to you. So at this point, I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Steve DeLauro. Thanks, Melinda, and welcome, everybody. Uh, just by way of introduction, my name is Stephen DeLauro, and I do work here at GuideSpark, but I must be fully transparent that I do not work in marketing, so you will get a pretty down and dirty view of exactly what an HR connector is and how it works. That's really what my job is here, is to really help clients like yourselves understand what are these tools, how can you take advantage of them, and more importantly, what really benefit does it provide you and your teams who you're communicating to. So if this is old news, I will apologize, but I wanted to cover first what is an HRIS or an HCM. And I think a lot about you know, acronyms and things that we do here, and I always wonder, well, do we even know what an HRIS or an HCM is? So I think about human capital management for HCM. I think about a human resources information system. That's our buzzword. They're pretty common in the industry. But think of it just as somewhere within your organization, there is a piece of software or a database that contains all the records that you know about your staff, all your employees, your contractors, maybe even your vendors, et cetera. And why that's important is because if this is really your warehouse of data, you want to leverage that inside the GuideSpark Communicate Cloud program. Our goal here is to really automate that process. So when we think about what is an HRIS connector, it's really just a fancy way of saying, we're going to connect your system of record, your employee data, who's going to be your audience for all these communications, we're going to connect it directly into GuideSpark Communicate Cloud. Now, don't get confused. We also have an acronym ourselves for our own product. We often call it GSCC for GuideSpark Communicate Cloud. It just rolls off the tongue a little easier sometimes in that long term. But at its essence, what a, an HRIS connector really is, is it's an automatic feed of your employee data, your audience, into the GuideSpark Communicate Cloud program, the GSCC platform. And what that really lets you do is automate and always have on tap an up-to-date audience list. So let's take a pause, see if there's any questions in the chat window about that before we start. But that's really the foundation. We're connecting into your system of record, and we're going to integrate it directly into the GuideSpark Communicate Cloud platform. You're probably wondering, like, why do I care? Why do I need to worry about these things? What is the benefit to me? Well, the real benefit really for you as maybe a program owner who is responsible for sending these communications, first and foremost to me is the ability to personalize. Imagine if you can send emails to a very select group of people based on maybe their job title, their location, maybe what their reporting structure might be. You can now not only personalize mass communication strategies, campaigns or journeys as we call them, but even individual messages inside the platform. And we're going to see all this live. I'm actually going to build a journey for you live. We're going to connect it to an HRS, so you'll see how you can take advantage of this. But personalization is really the foundation of why this is important. It just gives you much better reach, which is the second bullet. Now you can have multiple journeys with multiple personalized audiences, with each audience in each location maybe getting a certain customized message. That's really going to extend your reach. Now, of course, why do you really need to know this? Because imagine if you can report all of this. You know, here at GuideSpark, we've got offices here in Redwood City, California, Portland, Oregon, one in Hoboken, New York. Imagine if you could track who opens which message how many times from each location based on job titles. My managers in Hoboken never open my mail. Maybe I should stop sending emails. Maybe I'll text them directly. 
Metrics and analytics are really key that allows you as a program manager to report up to your upper management to say, here's the impact we're having because personalization is making us more tangent, more relevant. It's allowing us to reach different audiences and we're driving more success for communications. Those really are truly the benefits of why you might want to explore an HRIS connector. So let's get a little bit into the how-tos, and I think maybe at this point, before I get into the process, let's stop, let's jump into the actual product. And as I do that, if there are any questions, again, feel free, Melinda and Mike are here to ready to answer any questions you might have in the chat window, but I'm gonna get fancy and I'm gonna jump over to kind of how the process starts. Now, here's a pretty classic way a lot of clients take advantage of GuideSpark. We send emails. Now, you don't have to send an email. There are many other tools web banners, integrated banners, call to action links, text messages. I mean, we even have people putting raw data into Facebook Workplace and other integrations. But here's a pretty classic one. I have an email. I came and landed in my inbox. This time, I apologize, this is my email. So uh, bear with me if you see anything crazy in there. But this is really an email that I had sent myself as a test. And you can see it's just a nicely formatted based on one of our generic templates. It's about a tax form. And it's got a call to action here about go to watch the video. And if I select it, no surprise what happens. Well, it takes me directly to the actual video itself and it'll start to play. It doesn't look like it's showing up in the, the meeting for some reason. But let's think about, well, how does this process actually work? What happens inside that allows me to come in and send messages to myself and other people? So let me just jump over for a minute here and let me see if I can get my screen out of the way. How do we think about, how does Steve get this message? How does it know what to send to Steve, when, and how, and all these other fun things? Well, we've created a journey. We've uploaded an audience from our HRIS system, and we may have segmented that audience based on certain skills or attributes. So I've switched gears. Now I'm a program manager, much like yourself. So I've logged in to the GSCC platform as a client administrator. From here, I can actually come in and start to create and manage journeys and attach these audience lists through our connector. Now, this is just a little demo area that I have, and you can see I've got a lot of different journeys, and I've been copying them. So let's go in, let's create a brand new journey and show how this process can work really from scratch. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna add a journey. Fantastic. Hey, here's our standard one. Remember Melinda talked about some of our standard content that you can use and customize? Well, here's the list that I've already got loaded. I'm just gonna copy this 1090C tax prep. I'm gonna create a new journey. Pretty straightforward, all very wizard-driven. What would you like to call this? Well. I'm gonna call this one uh, Steve, simply because I can type my name usually pretty quickly and accurately. I'm gonna launch it on February 6th, that's great. But notice here, I can come in and start to create a new audience. Now I've copied the existing campaign, I've already got some audiences in here. Don't worry about that. Watch what happens when I create a new audience. What I have available to me is I can create a targeted audience or a basic. Now basic CSV file upload, works great, you can do all the same functionality, but who wants to upload a CSV file? Imagine you're doing an onboarding campaign. Every week you're hiring new people. You don't want to upload a CSV and model, manage it every week, that's crazy. This is where the HRIS connector comes into play. It automates this process because your audience list is always up to date. So here I do targeted, and I can say, hey, what's your HR data source? I'm gonna go with this sandbox Namely too. We use Namely as our HRIS system of record, by the way, so that's where that name comes from. You might use Workday, you might use you know, SAP. There's a ton of them out there. And I'm gonna call this one, uh, I'll call it Steve N2 for, for short, Steve for Namely too. I go ahead and I hit next, and now I'm basically creating the eyes. Now what you see here is the list. I pulled data in from our HRIS system. I've got 28 people in my list, fantastic. You can see I've got some content that comes over like which department, are they active or not, right? Pretty standard HR stuff. And maybe even where they're located, Redwood City, yeah, there's some San Francisco in there, there's a couple of New York cities. So I've got 28 people. And what GuideSparks asked me, he said, hey Steve, can you confirm, is the email in the email column? Yeah, is the mobile in the mobile column? Yeah, is the first name, what do you want for the first name? Bear with me. I think I just exited out of my create journey. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go ahead and create another one quickly. Sorry about that. Yeah, and as you're doing that, um, it's okay for people to use 
a different type of HRIS system, you know, we're able to connect to a variety of these, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And that's really the goal. And when we get into some of the different details, we'll talk about how we work with these different audience types. So again, kind of caught back up there. So all we're really doing is saying, hey, what would you like to use for the first name? So you know, when the email says, hey, Steve, you could have a lot of columns that come in from your HRIS system. It could be your first name, your last name. I want first name to be first name, check. Mobile to be the mobile number, check. And email to be email. I hit next. Well, you know what? I was going to ask you another question. Um, maybe you can talk a little bit about why we've got sort of the masking taking place on the on the data oh, there. You noticed that, did you? I did notice that, and and I think you could explain a little bit about you know, why. You must have peeked ahead because we yeah, actually we mask data. That's a good point, Melinda. So you're probably wondering why do you mask out certain things in those fields? Why does GuideSpark do that? Well, one of the main concerns that clients like yourselves have, whether it's you or I'm going to guess your IT team, is security. What we try to do at all costs is protect what we call personally identifiable information. And if at any time GuideSpark finds an element in this feed that is considered unique, means it doesn't appear more than a factored number of times, we think it's unique because if I were to combine your first name, your last name, your email address, your mobile phone number, and your location, I would be able to find you. That's personally identifiable. And by the rules set forward by things like GDPR and all of our information security policies, that's not allowed by vendors. So for that reason, we mask out certain elements. It protects your data so that I can't see it, you can't see it, no one can see it, so there's no way that you could personally identify an individual from your company by GuideSpark or anybody else and protecting their security and identity. Great point. So what we can do now is you can see, well, here's my list. I've got 28 people. This is just a little test list. But I can actually filter. I would like to create an audience that is by location of, and I can just grab any value. Let me see everybody who might be in Redwood City. And I can go ahead and create. Notice it went down to 19 people. So I can create these filters, these segments of my audience, and use that as my master list. But right now, I want everybody. I want everybody who's in my GuideSpark world here, all 28 of us. We actually have a lot more than that. but. <laughs> I can filter down to get the result I want, and I hit save. And when I'm done, oh, I might have to give it a different name because I already used M2. Bear with me. There we go. I'd already used the ends up apparently. So I've created an audience, and you can see it'll be in my list down here. I've got, a create, I've got an audience in there for Steve. It's right here. It's got 28 members. And what that means is I can start to use that audience to send messages. I go to my campaign. My default campaign just came with the journey that I loaded by default. And again, these are the elements that we can prepare with you, for you, on your behalf, whether you use our standard templates or we tailor them to match your needs. I've got an email that's going to go out here, nothing terribly fancy. I've got another form that's going to go out. This one actually happens to have a video. You get a nice little preview. It's actually the one we saw in the email. But what you can do with these audiences, you see right now, this message is going to go to everybody who's in that audience of Steve. Everybody, all 28 people. Personalization lets me not only control it on a per campaign basis, maybe I only want a Redwood City for this campaign, or maybe I want this message this 1095C tax prep 3 document to only go to the team in Redwood City. Watch how I can customize or personalize on a per audience basis. I've already got some defined, but I can also create my own and create my own new sub audience and say, you know, I want to add that filter in now. I'm going to call it Redwood City. I'm going to add a filter on location and because I don't want to be lazy and type. I'm just going to copy this. I want this second message to only go to the team of 19 people in Redwood City. So now what I've done is I've sent this only to the team in Redwood City. So when I think about personalizing, I think about using this master list of not just 28, think 1,000, think 10,000, think 20, 30,000 people, filter to get to the audience I want, and I could use it for my entire campaign. 
but I could also come into any individual message and further filter it again, saying this message, no, it's only appropriate for this part of my audience. So pretty quickly and easily, the HRIS connector, it just populates my audience so that I can filter it. The benefit being it's always up to date, it's always changing, so if you build an audience list for Redwood City and more staff come in, guess what? You don't have to do anything. The list automatically captured it. And, you know, people come and go. If people leave, they'll automatically remove them from the list. I think we've got a question that popped up. Maybe we want to That was a lot to digest. Pause. Yeah, let's, let's take yeah, a pause. Let's take a let's pause. the question is. Um, and the question is, can you define the fields or data that GSCC is pulling from the HCM? That's a great question. And yeah. The short answer is yes, absolutely. And that's really where the power of the connector comes in. And that's, that's kind of the next piece that maybe we'll spend some time talking about, which is we've seen how it works inside the platform. That's kind of the end result. How do we get to this point? How do I determine what gets in to guide, spark, communicate cloud, and how do I manage it? So I'm going to unfortunately bore you with a few PowerPoints, but trust me, it's a lot better than looking at code. So let me jump back to our PowerPoint. And let's talk a little bit about how this process works. So the process is really straightforward, and I had to stretch it to get up to eight, but it all starts with our setup guide. We have a setup guide that's posted online. You can download it, but the macro steps are quite simply, in that guide, there's a form that you get to fill out. You fill out the form, and it's going to ask you questions about, hey, which type of a system are you using? Which types of data fields do you really want to pass to GuideSpark? You don't have to pass everything. In fact, my experience, most clients don't want to tell us everything about employees because, frankly, we don't care either. We only really want to know the relevant pieces that will let you segment or organize your audience. Now, when we go through the setup guide, and I can pull this up and we can walk through it, but that's for the real technically, you know, people that enjoy that stuff. But you're going to be asked to create some login credentials in your HR system. So if you're using Workday as an example, there will be people who have access to Workday as an account. They can log in, they can do things in Workday. You're going to need to create one for this connector because the way GuideSpark works is you create a connector with a, an intermediary, if you will, a company called Workato, which gives us security, very important, and allows us, you log into Workato, we log into Workato, but you never log directly into us and we never log directly into you, which is, again, maintaining this element of security. But to facilitate that, step two, you must create some credentials in your HR system. Now, step three is really, I think, the question that was asked. How do I determine what to send to GuideSpark? Most HRI systems have two options. One is very loosely called a business object. That's everything I know about an individual. Right? It's the complete business object, everything I know about a person or an entity. And that sends everything over. Now, most clients don't like to do that for just this reason. It's, it's massive. But it's good to know and important to know that you can do this if you do have sophisticated filtering needs. Most clients, in my experience so far, have done what we call the report aspect. Now, most HRIS systems, they allow you to create and export reports, right? Whether you're sending it to management or your HR leader, <coughs> excuse me, they want to know who's come and gone, what their titles are. It's a report. People think reports are just printing. They can be. It could be an Excel file. It can be. Most of these systems have a function which is either XML or JSON, J-S-O-N. Most clients that we've worked with so far are using the JSON report format. This is a long way of explaining, like, you go into Workato, you say, I want these fields. I want the name, address, mobile number, job title, reporting manager, location, build a report, hit the export to a JSON link, literally just an option and a pull down, send that over to GuideSpark. So that's really how we think about it. You decide what to send most commonly through a report. That way you control it, not GuideSpark. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you send that over to GuideSpark. Once that's done, you will, within this intermediary component called Workato, you'll set up your app connection. It says, hey, I need to do some configuration to tell you what I'm using, Workday or another tool. What kind of report am I using? This one. And when that happens, GuideSpark gets an email and we say, hey, I know you're in there now. Let me go and confirm to say, yes, I will accept what you're going to send over. That's step five. Step six, going to create the connector, which is just really confirming that, yes, this is the report. It needs to go here. I'm giving it permission. 
And when that's done, GuideSpark says, okay, I can see the data that you've sent. I will configure it so that it loads into GuideSpark. We affectionately call it the recipe. It's saying, hey, map these fields that you've given us into these fields inside GuideSpark. And then when it's done, guess what? Exactly as we've seen, you'll have a pull down in GuideSpark Communicate Cloud. So say, hey, here's your HRS connection. Would you like to use that? Yes. Would you like to use a CSV file? You can still use those if you've taken advantage of them in the past. You can still continue to use them. But now it's available as an option inside GuideSpark. So you can start leveraging it exactly what we've already seen. So let's take another pause. Let's see if there's any questions, because I know we're covering a lot of material pretty quickly. Right. Let's stop and see. Simple form, fill it out. It's going to walk you through these steps in excruciating detail. Mm -hmm. A couple of things you'll need to know, and I've got a slide for this too. A couple of things your IT team is going to want to know, and we'll cover that. But think HR credentials. The key work for you, honestly, as a program manager, what do you want to tell GuideSpark? What fields do you want to tell GuideSpark that are important that you may want to use to contact certain groups? Or segment your audience. So I promise I'll stop talking now and let's see if there's any other questions. Ah, I see one that uh, is a good question which is, is Workado encrypted? Yes. Yeah. All data is always encrypted at all times. Even as it's being transacted. Even you know, as it's being the, transacted. Yeah. And it's one of the key reasons we use a partner like Workado is because number one, we never have direct access to you as the client, that's important. Which is very important, yeah. yeah. Two, all data at all times is encrypted. Encrypted at transit, no data is ever stored in Workado other than your account name, which is stored encrypted at rest. And all the data is passed through Workado to GuideSpark in an encrypted format. And as we saw, when it lands in GuideSpark, we actually even redact or star out data that we believe has been marked as personally identifiable. There's an algorithm in the back that I can get into excruciating detail, but I'll pass on that for now. But security is one of the key elements because whether or not you care much about security, I do Moonlight as the data privacy and security manager here, so it's a big deal for me. But protecting clients' information is top of mind for us, and all of these processes and procedures are built with security in mind, both in the raw transit, any data that's stored, as well as how we even view the data, so we never get to see your data. Great question. I love that security question. So, what are the requirements? Well, there are a few nitty-gritty requirements that you need to think about. So, within GuideSpark Communicate Cloud, there is a, uh, a feature, a function, which is we call it automatic email delivery. GuideSpark will send emails on your behalf. You don't have to do anything. It will send those emails to those people you've identified automatically for you. We recommend this as a first start because that really is what leverages the power. Imagine a dynamic updating audience list that changes weekly, monthly. You have a campaign that automatically will email people for you at that normal cadence of however you've established that message. Automatic email allows you to do that. Now there are some other steps to do that. Trust me, there's a setup guide that walks you through. You have an IT team, if you're not in the IT team, that knows exactly what an email relay looks like, what DKIM and DMARC mean, and how to set up whitelisting. Those are all things that allow you to automatically send emails to your staff without you, A, having to do it, and B, that they receive it and not think it's some sort of a spam or phishing attempt. So automatic email is key because, you know, think about, I don't want to send a thousand emails. I don't want to manage 2,000 emails. GuideSpark Communicate Cloud can do that for you. Here's the big one. Know how you want to segment your audience. Now, we've touched on this, but this is one of the key requirements, and it's in the form. Think about how you really want to segment your audience to really be effective in communicating, because those are the fields that you'll need to make sure that are available for you to filter on inside GuideSpark. We covered security pretty in depth, but trust me on this one, your IT and security teams, as soon as you say the word integrate, they're going to say, excuse me, what? We need to know a lot more about this in which case we can prepare all the documentation you need about what our security protocols are, what Mercado's security protocols are, to put their mind at rest that this is safe and secure. But they will know, so you need to expect it on your side. It is, I wouldn't call it a formality, but there are pretty standardized in terms of the process we go through and the questions that we get asked. But just know that if you're planning a project plan, that they're going to want to be involved, and you should probably be proactive. Now, the business object versus report, that's another one. Your work, your work day or your HRIS system administrator will know this, 
but it's good just to give them the flexibility and the option that they'll need to determine what's best for you. I'll be honest, the report seems to be the most popular because, again, it's all about having pinpoint control from your perspective. Now, if you're not familiar, SSO stands for single sign-on. It's how you authenticate into the GuideSpark platform. It's optional. It's not required. We have a lot of clients that are starting to take advantage of single sign-on for two reasons. Is You know what? Some of my information is really public. I, I really don't care who sees it in my eyes. Others like, no, no, that's manager only. That's maybe executive only. And you can control who sees which content on a per-campaign basis if you're taking advantage of single sign-on. It just, again, gives you kind of the ultimate flexibility in terms of reach and personalization by saying, I want this message in this campaign to go to this audience, but only certain people in my company, by virtue who have access through single sign-on, can even see this campaign. It's kind of an extra layer of maybe security, but I think of it more as personalization. Single sign-on, pretty popular. It's a simple authentication tool that, again, you as the client control, not guide's part, putting you in the driver's seat at all times with who sees which content when and then how you even personalize further down from that based on you know, whatever you tell us, city, location, job title, et cetera. How's all this work? What do I do? I, this sounds great, Steve. I want that. What do I do next? Well, it's pretty easy. There is a setup guide online. We can certainly email it to you if you like, just send us a note, but it's on our support website. Just go grab it. It walks through this in every piece of detail. Send it to your IT team. Send it to your Workday or your HRIS administrator. They'll know what the technical terms in there mean. Finish the setup form and send it over to your customer success manager. Or if you're a new client and you're not having a success manager assigned yet, that's fine. Send it to your sales rep. They'll know what to do. And then let, let, let us just take it over from there. We can walk you through. We actually have an implementation manager whose job it is is to walk clients through this process, explain it in detail, and then walk through the technical integrations with your technical teams and get it up and running. How long does it take? Well, that's always a loaded question. It's really a function of how fast you want to work, how quickly can your organization walk through some of these technical components, the approvals, quite typically take a long time. And then it's when can the GuideSpark team schedule you to come in. I've seen it happen in an, in an hour. I'll be honest, we worked with a client. Right. We had the right person on the call. And we configured the whole thing from start to finish and data loaded in one hour on a Zoom webinar call. That's how fast it can move when all the pieces are in place. Do I have the right person? Can the HRS administrator create the account? Yes, fill it in. Can they fill out the Workado form? Yes, great. Is our engineering team online? Yes, great. Can you build that recipe as we call it? Yes, great. Send me a test file, data's loaded, great. One hour is kind of my record. Most of the time, I'll be honest, factor in a couple weeks just because we'll have to schedule our engineering team to do our piece. You'll have to schedule your technical teams on your side. That process I've seen takes about two weeks. A lot of clients like to do a little test first. Don't send me 30,000 the first time, maybe send 100 just to see is it what you like, is it coming in the way you want, are the fields correct, and then you send the big file. So that's really the how to get started. And again, if you, if you don't know who your customer success manager is, we've got you covered. Brian Grogan, he leads our entire customer success organization. When in doubt, call Brian. That's always my go-to. Brian will know who to direct it to. If you don't have a customer success manager, even if you do, he'll know who it is. Yeah. And definitely, if you know your CSM, um, it's a great uh, idea to reach out to them because they can help uh, guide you through some of this process as well. Exactly. So that's a lot of talking. Let's maybe stop again, see if there's any other questions. We, we can open it up. I think yeah. we're ready for Q&A as well, right? Yeah, I think we can um, switch over to Q&A. And um, I think we have another question popping up here about using the report. Um, do you send a group of data or fields and then the audience is built from those available fields? Exactly. That's exactly what it is. So I think of it, you know, inside your HRI system, you'll have a number of attributes that you know about a person or however you identify employees. You'll send that data over, but you get to select which fields you send. That's the beauty of the report. And then that comes in as a master list. So I can get your list of, I don't know, 20,000 employees, and you've told me their location, their mobile number, their first name, their last name, their email, uh, maybe what their job title is, and then you can use that to build an audience. 
show me everybody who's in Redwood City that has the title of manager. Well, that's my audience for this campaign. Then within that, maybe I want to say, based on job title and reporting structure, I only want to send it to managers of engineering. And I can filter an individual message based on that available pool of data from this master list that you sent. I hope that, uh, hope that answers the question, because it can be a pretty deep topic. But yeah, you send out the attributes, you put them in GuideSpark, they're all available that you can build an audience for. And then you can even sub-filter within a campaign. Right, so you can get really granular. Really granular. According to what your needs are, your reporting needs, as well as your um, designing, say, specific journeys or specific content for um, yeah. individuals within the organization. And I think another way to think about this is, you know, you've got these base employees, but you also may have contractors and you may have other types of employees that are, are working um, that you also need to segment and send information to. So I think it's, it's very powerful. Yeah, and, and again, it's kind of back to that point, you know, what do you need to do to get started? Think hard about what you want. You can always change it, but yeah. think hard about how you're envisioning targeting your audience. Well, how do I want to reach my employees? What categories or themes or how do I want to find them? Send them all over and then you get to pick which ones to use. And I think another question um, that isn't being asked, but I'll ask it, is how frequently could I have the new data flowing into the system? Like, is it happening as uh, new employees get entered and old ones get removed, or you know what I mean, like in real time, or is it like at a certain point of the day that we would get sort of an influx of the newest data? You know, honestly, that's a good, it's up to the client. How often do they want to refresh? Some yep. clients want to do it daily. Hourly is probably a little extreme, right. but you could if you have that many changes. Daily seems to be the right cadence. Every day I may have some changes in my HR system. Daily is the cadence that we see. We have one client that wants to do it weekly, which is fine. That's their cadence. You tell us what you want for cadence as a client, how often you want this list to be updated, and then we just follow through. Daily is feeling about the right pace right now based on what clients are doing in their HRS. Any more than that would be like, well, how often is it really changing? What, how, I'm not sending a message every hour. I'm probably going to send it once a week, maybe a couple times a week. So daily feels about right. But bottom line, it's up to you as the client to say, I want this list updated at this pace. And we simply comply. Well, let's see if we have any more questions from our audience. Give it a moment. And I think, yeah, if, if not, I think uh, we can let everybody get back to the rest of their day. Um, thanks very much for attending today. And um, again, you can reach out to Brian if you have questions about this. Um, he can direct you to the right resources. Uh, and we will, as Mike said at the beginning, we will be distributing the recording and the slides um, to you guys probably tomorrow. You know, as soon as we make, as soon as we get that available. Great. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.